All right, so welcome back, guys. Thanks for joining me for this one. Uh, this particular video has to do with an outage uh, concerning uh, multiple fires that took place. And we're going to talk about a few things. But before we begin, go ahead and click that like button. So let's get into it. All right, so this particular event took place on 91st and Harper on the south side of Chicago. And uh, just to get started, let's have a look at the neighborhood before the fire. We can see the awesome patchwork that uh, Streets and Sanitation does for Chicago residents. But here is where all the magic happened. It's just to look back through time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna let these clips play for a little bit. Yeah, I might say a few things here and there, but the main crux of the video is gonna take place in the trailer. I don't go forward, Dave. Yeah, that's Dave right there. I don't know. We, we want to sweep in the alley before. Uh, I, I was still first, but they but the probably got beat y'all here. Yeah. I don't know. We want to sweep in the alley first. Dude, sus, man. It's, yeah, dude, they're on the other end of the alley. That's how I ended up over here. Jeez, Louise, man. He's a contractor. Well, I mean, we, we just started giving the contractor stuff recently. But, uh, and for the most part, I do it all. Hey, y'all need anything pushed out the way? Y'all good? Um, yeah. okay, thanks, thanks, man. I'm, uh, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. And you are with, like, what's your position? Uh, Fibertech. Fibertech. Fiber. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. He's like, get out your way. I'm all about that content, baby. Jeez Louise. Looks like it. Oh, wow. Got the first half of the second half since we and I'm familiar with it. <laughs> I'm recording the Oh, you got the first out of the second house that's related. Uh -huh. So I think they got a tour or something. Some of us got a tour with them or whatever. The contract is going to be shit. All right, dude. I go about the 530. They run out the line from the output of the 23 to the input of the 20 and charge them all that money. I'm like, so you got to the input of the 20, but everything going out the 20 is burning like a and they didn't do the spread. These two related. Damn, dude. <laughs> so this guy's garage didn't get burned down. These two got burned down. Hey, got enough? Yeah. Right up. when you And typically, uh, when these things happen, there's an order of. Uh, the order of operations, as it were, right? That order of priority. Like, who gets the alley, right? Who gets the area? Yeah, so typically the first person to get the alley is going to be law enforcement. Law enforcement and paramedics, right? For obvious reasons, just in case someone's hurt. So the second in priority would be power and gas. Again, for obvious reasons. Uh, power has to be restored, and there has to be no threat of a gas leak. Else, you know, we could be back to square one with another fire, right? Or fatalities and whatnot. Then it falls down to the uh, the communications people, telco companies, right? ISPs. And when it falls back to these guys, when it falls back to us, who gets the alley really depends on who got there first. Whoever gets there first, they get the alley. Then everybody else has to wait patiently. But in this particular case, you know, we all had uh, a bit of a powwow, and we came up with a way so that we all could use the alley at the same time so that we all could go home, right, because it was raining this day. 
So while these guys were doing that, I had to abandon the scene to go get temporary fiber. Right in here are the numerous spools that we have. This is a coaxial line. We keep that on site as well. Just like everybody else, man. There's stores of this stuff everywhere. And then I had to bring it back. But, you know, just a heads up, my trailer is dirty. I had a few things going on earlier in the day. And it is absolutely filthy. And I'm not ashamed of it, man. I just felt I should warn you. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we're going to look at, right? Heat damaged fiber. Uh, in this particular case, the jacket is fused to everything else on the inside of it. it everything melted together not the fibers themselves but the cable and everything else inside yeah so we can see here it, typically something we would normally see that rip cord just keeps on breaking man all right the other thing that you might have noticed is that this isn't armored fiber typically if you're going to run any fiber why not run armor it just doesn't make sense not to I've seen armored fiber that stands up to garage fires, man. So I don't see any reason why not. But here, because the jacket is melted to the to everything else in there, it's becoming increasingly difficult. Not only is the fiber harder, but everything is fused to everything else on the inside. And so this was my first uh, plan here, right? Make incisions on both sides of the fiber. Got to get at this ripcord one way or the other. Yeah, still trying. Oh yeah, just an FYI. Everything that happens in this trailer is sped up until something important that I want to share with you uh, becomes obvious. And there's quite a few things, so stay tuned guarantee you're going to get some value <laughs> guarantee you're going to get a lot of value out of this video yeah so typically you wouldn't have to uh you know dig out the strength members like this but like i said everything's melted so there you go so we got the rip cord dug it out of the side we're trying to separate the rest of it all from the jacket Yeah, I told you it was raining outside, so my gloves are wet, uh, my pants are muddy, and um, yeah, you, you really got to depend on your tools for everything. So I figured I'd peel this baby back like uh, <laughs> like something you would peel something back, right? The analogy escapes me right now, but we can see right here, we can see that j just just looking at it, it shouldn't look like this everything's melted to the inside of the jacket and the strength members are even stiffer Yep. All right. Oh, whoop. <laughs> that side pulled pretty good. Mm -hmm. These things happen. These things break. But still able to make it happen. The other side broke. My next great idea 
was to just yank all the strength members out uh, to create some space inside of the jacket, right? Create some space on the inside in hopes that I could get that central tube out uh, with no problems. Like everything's melted, man. All right, so just to sidestep for a bit, this is one of the scraps of uh, the chunks of fiber that I cut off uh, from this particular outage. And we can see uh, just how it looks, man. We can see that uh, the insides are melted. The lashing wire was completely dug into the jacket from all the heat. You know, it, it really doesn't look like this when it's in, you know, good, healthy fiber. It really doesn't look like this. In fact, you can see the spiraling on the jacket, the spiraling of the jacket, which was initially started from the superheated lashing wire. Everything's fused, man. So I just wanted to show this to you so you know how difficult, you know, what it actually looks like on the inside. But let's continue. All right, so I had got one side down already. Digging out the other side. This is why you always pull enough or a lot of uh, fiber inside of your trailer, man. You just don't know how much you're gonna cut off, right? You just don't know. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I was able to work that boy back. Now, uh, here we are. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut this part off, cut the jacket off. And let's see how difficult it would be to get into the newer temporary fiber that we have, that we brought with us. Yeah, everything's wet, man. Here we can see that, uh, you know, we got those rip cords out very easy, right? The cap slid right off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, things happen, man. That's why you got two of them. Thank God, man. Oh, yeah. The other side pulled through just fine. Now, because the properties of this cable and the heat damage one are totally different, man. See how I just pulled it right out? The nylon is still with the, uh, is still surrounding the jacket. This is typically what we would expect. But like I said, heat damage fiber is completely different than, you know, regular fiber. Even more examples of how it's, how everything melted to the central tube. Yeah. All right, just another side note while I build this case, I just want to point something out to you guys. It doesn't matter if you can build a thousand different cases or one case. They all typically have the same the, the same principles, essentially. You have an input and output. Uh, you got signal coming in and signal going out. In a perfect world, you have a 12 count going in, 12 count going out. But odds are, as the plant grows, it won't 
look like that. You'll see something like this, a 96 count going into a case and various counts going out. You know, just don't be thrown off, man. If you can make one case, you can make a million of them across various manufacturers, right? But let's continue. All right, so here's where I think a lot of new guys, a lot of new splicers actually run into problems. When you're mass splicing, right? When you're doing ribbon splices, you're gonna run into something like this. <laughs> you're gonna run into the yellow screen or an error screen. I mean, here we can see that uh, what it says here is cleave shape NG. Cleave shape not good, right? And when we look at the, the actual fibers, you think to yourself, hey man, this, it does look good, right? And we can see that uh, there's an X and a Y axis, you know, side to side, uh, forward and backward. And, you know, you, you're looking at it and you're thinking there's nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong at all. So what's happening here is that the fibers just aren't lining up vertically and they're not lining up, uh, you know, forward and backward. Right. And I'm going to show you why this is happening. If you want to correct the issues with the, you know, you're going to reposition the fibers, reposition the chucks so that the fibers lay down properly in the V grooves. The issue is something that a lot of us really overlook, and I'm going to highlight it here in just a few moments. I'm going to do something. It looks pretty innocuous. It looks like nothing's happening, but just watch closely. And I, I observed my buddy Dave doing this because he has flawless splices, man. Absolutely flawless. This right here. Yeah, that right there, feathering the glass. So what happens is, you know, you cut, you clean, and you cleave. If those fibers are bound together when you cleave, the cleave is going to be off. Yeah, but when you feather them and they're evenly spaced, you get better splices. You, you save yourself so much time doing this one thing. Here's a look at my floors. Like I said, man, I had plenty of stuff going on. So don't at me in the comments, man. I know my trailer's trash because I actually use it. See, right here, looking at this image right here, we can see two different, uh, two different handlings of the fiber. So we can see that on the left, you know, upon closer inspection that the glass is bound at the ends, right? And the yellow box there, uh, we can see that the glass is bound together. But when we look closer on the left at the red box, uh, closer down into the ribbon, it looks fine. And when we see stuff like that, we think it's okay still, right? So we go ahead and cleave it. And then we find out that, you know, we get crap cleaves. When in actuality, you do, right? Yeah, but then when we look on the right, what we see is what feathering should look like. A proper separation of the glass. It looks better. Always make sure you got good separation of the glass. You'll get better cleaves, better outcomes, shorter job time. Oh yeah. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave comments if you had similar experiences to this. Um, I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been extremely busy with power supplies, uh, making sure my plant's up to snuff. But I would like to hear what you guys have to say. All right. So I want to say thanks a bunch. You guys have a nice one. Click that like button, right? <laughs> have a nice one. Peace.